Hey, what's up guys? My name is the channel. Welcome to episode 45 of Game Programming. So first of all, I've got a new mic microphone, which actually literally cost me less than half the price of my previous one. And you know, it's, it's better. Like it sounds better in my opinion. So, um, that's kind of, uh, it's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so if I sound different, that's why it's a different microphone. So, um, so yeah. All right. Anyway, let's get started with this. So last time we talked about the move method and actually finalizing, I guess, the movement for the player. And if we launch the game, apart from these coordinates, we also saw that the game basically functioned as, as it needed to, but we actually, you know, kept track of the player's coordinates, which was pretty cool. Um, now today we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the player sprite. So we don't actually have a sprite for the player. So if I launch this, what you are seeing actually in reality, let's just go ahead and hide the coordinates. If I go back to game.java, um, in, in the game class, the game.java class, I can, uh, I'll just get rid of, um, I'll just get rid of this, this draw string thing. And, uh, all right. So basically what you're seeing is, you know, essentially an invisible player in the middle of the screen and the, um, the map is sort of scrolling uh, with him, I guess. So let's uh, let's actually make him a sprite. Now, instead of going ahead and drawing a sprite, um, I actually got an email a few days ago from uh, from Andy Wall. That was his name. So um, shout out to him because he actually like he actually drew a sprite for me called King Cherno, <laughs> and um, <laughs> and I, I mean I didn't even ask for it. Like I just got an email and he's like you know wrote me like a long message about. Um, you know, thanking me, I guess, for my tutorials and stuff like that. And he attached uh, King Cherno. So, I mean, that's just freaking perfect. Um, honestly, like, he, he just attached it, like, just as a present. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and I asked him if I could use it for the series. He said, yeah, go ahead. So, um, yeah, we'll be using this King Cherno sprite, which is pretty cool, actually. So, that kind of, you know, takes the, uh, takes the drawing of it out of me. So, if we go to our um, spritecheat.png file and I can find it for you here. If basically it's in workspace, it's in your workspace and it is in, let me just find it. All right. So in your rain directory, um, in, in the resources folder in textures, we made a file called sprite, sprite sheet.png, which is what contains our grass sprite at the moment. So over here, right, what we're going to do here, is we're gonna pop that sprite in. Now, you guys can make your own sprite. If you really want me to make it available for download this thing, I, I might um, pop a link in there or something with the next next episode tomorrow. But um, as far as this goes, uh, you guys can probably make your own sprite. But uh, here's a sprite, so I'll just pop it. It is 16 by 16. Sorry, I guess that would be 32 by 32, wouldn't it? Hang on, is each square? Yeah, it'd be 32 by 32, so it is quite a large sprite, um, but we'll talk about that today. So, I'll just pop it like, I might actually just pop it down at the very bottom, just because, I don't know, I might make it into a 16 by 16 sprite in the future, but you know, for now, we'll just see what a 32 by 32 sprite looks like. So, here it is in our game, let's just, um, sorry, in, in our, in paint.net, in, in our sprite sheet.png file. Um, so I'm just going to save that and it's telling me to save as um, because it's got multiple layers, but I'll just save it as a PNG again. That's what it was before. Just like that. Oops. Save and I'll override it. All right, sweet. So, and we'll flatten, by the way. Um, okay. So now that we've got this King Cherno sprite, we kind of need to like, we kind of need, need to draw it, right? So let's start off with drawing this one right here, the top left one. Um, it's, it's, first of all, first thing we need to realize, realize honestly, is that it's, it's kind of big, right? It, it's essentially four sprites. It, it makes up four squares, right? It's got four parts to it. So back in Eclipse here, if we go into, um, into our sprite.java class, we can actually make it. So there's a few different techniques for this. I'm gonna guide you through the first one, which is doing it in 16 size chunks. So we'll make a few sprites and one of them's gonna be called player zero, all right? That's gonna be like the first part of the player. And I'll set that equal to new sprite. 
and it'll be again 16 size and over here I'll have to find the x and y coordinates. So if we come down here, we're gonna add that's zero, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's ten on y and of course zero on x. So that's what it's gonna look like. And then obviously it's using our sprite sheet for the tiles. So yeah, I probably should have put it into another sprite sheet, but we'll we'll organize that stuff later. Let's just make sure this works first. Um, and I'll obviously duplicate that a bunch of times and rename this to 321, right? So we've got four different variables. Um, and as for here, uh, player one will be, you know, this part. So it'll be 10, but one, and then that'll be 11, 11, all right? So four corners, all right? I'm probably not gonna have time to rush through this and explain everything, but you guys, you guys should get this. If you don't, open up a thread on Reddit. The link is in the description to my subreddit. Anyway, um, so now that we've got the four sprites, we also need to make the four, well, we don't even need to make the four things, but if we go back into player, um, we kind of need a kind of need to set a sprite here as well. So the way that I like to do this is because player will be animated in the future. That's something you need to consider right now. We're not gonna animate it today, but we will animate it in the future, obviously. Um, the way that you could do it is you know, the fact is that this player class right now, it extends mob and mob only has access to one sprite. So that's that's an issue in itself. Um, that's all right, we, we can sort of see through that if we really have to. So the way that I like to do it is in the screen.java class, I like to have a separate class for rendering mobs or rendering, you know, the, the player in this case. So because, um, because we kind of do have four things to render, um, because we have four things to render, it, it might be a little bit difficult. It'll be different from the render tile method, obviously. First of all, it's, it's gonna be different from the render tile method because it's a completely different iteration of rendering. Um, but it's also gonna be different from mobs, possibly, and from the standard rendering method because it is twice as large. So let's just basically make something called render player. So it's gonna have a few parameters going to have in XP, YP, and player, player. Um, and it's going to have the same rendering line. Let's just copy this method, the render style method into here, and then we'll, we'll change it as we need to. So first of all, we know that the size of the player is 32 by 32. Oh no, we'll be doing it in chunks though. So 16 by 16. Um, and let's import player. Um, this stuff... Again, I'll just, you know, make sure that we're doing stuff the right way. And for here, um, all I need to do is player dot, oh, but we won't even be doing it that way. So I'm sort of doing this on the fly, by the way. Um, all right, so there'll be four different sprites. So it'll be whatever sprite we fit into it. So I guess better way would be sprite, sprite. And then it would be sprite dot pixels. And then, um, you know, our standard x plus y, whoops, plus y times, well, yeah, sprite dot size. Do we have a, um, well, it's gonna be 16, so might as well pop that in here. All right, so that's gonna give us our basic logic here. So if we come back into player, we've got a method here called render, and we can start feeding that stuff in here. First thing we need for render is the screen. All right, that's very important. Uh, the second thing we need is the actual location of the render to be taking place. So the way that, that sort of happens is, um, you know, because we're rendering, we kind of need to be rendering it at a specific location, uh, obviously. Um, even though even though you guys might think that the player sort of is in the middle of the screen at all times, that's a very bad way to look at it. Um, because the thing is, like, you don't want to be like, Oh, it doesn't matter what where the player is. I'll just render him in the very center of the screen. Yeah, you could do that, but that's not cool. <laughs> like that's you don't do it that way. And I could, of course, give you reasons for that. One of the reasons, just off the top of my head, is if you want to like animate a cutscene or some or something that's running on the game engine, you want to off. You, you you might not want. Basically, you don't. You you might not want to have the camera centered on the player at all times. All right, you might want to change that. You might want to make it so that the camera is slightly off center 
Like if the player is moving really fast forward, you might want to just bring him back a little or something like that. Bring him down a little. Um, there's so many different things to do it. So you always want to be rendering it at the location. What you want to do is set the location of the camera rather than the location of the player to be fixed. All right. Sweet. So one thing we want to do is keep track of where the player is. Luckily, obviously in the entity class, we've got two integers, which keep track of where the player is. So over here in render, um, we're just going to simply go screen dot, um, render player. Yeah, we call it render player at X, Y. So in other words, we're just feeding that stuff in and the sprite is going to be interesting. So <laughs> the sprite at the moment, it looks like it's going to be sprite dot player zero. Now you, you guys might be thinking, but hang on a minute, you know, why are we doing it this way? Um, what happened to the rest of the player sprites and we'll deal with them in a minute. But first of all, we need to really talk about how this screen kind of gets here. So if we go back to the place where it overrides, um, we're overriding screen, which is wonderful, but we haven't actually ever made the screen class visible in an entity before, have we? And we kind of need to, because if we want to access the screen class in player, um, you know, we need to fit it in there, but that's not really a problem because we're going to do that from the game class. So right now our issue here is the screen gives us a null pointer exception. And I'm sorry, this episode is going to be a little bit longer than usual, but there's a lot to cover here. And, uh, and I really don't want to split it up into two parts because you guys all hate me for doing that. So yeah. Um, but if we go back to our game.jav class, Java, I keep saying like Java. <laughs> if we go back to our game.java class, um, you'll find that we had to our player here and to render player, we can simply call in the render method after we render the level player dot render. And then we can plug screen in that way. And now we've got the screen thing. So we've solved that null pointer exception because it's feeding screen in from here and over here screen eight is actually equal to a new instance of that class. So that's all lovely and we're probably going to work perfectly. Um, so that gets rid of that. And finally, I think, Let's just run it, see what we get. All right, look at that. So we've got the this this guy up here in the top left corner of the um, of the screen. That's that's awesome. So the first thing we need to fix is why is he not in, not in the middle? And the reason he's not in the middle is because we actually haven't given him an offset to be at. So what we've said right now is, you know, just be wherever. We haven't really been like you know, be in the middle. So first thing you'll notice is that like it is kind of working perfectly in, in a sense, like it's doing what we intended it to do. It's just not, it's just not aligned. That's all. If you check out X and Y, um, you'll see that that is actually where it's rendering them. And as we move, you know, it's, it's still there. It's like still in the middle. You know what I mean? Like the, this thing's actually moving along with the player. It's just over there. So in other words, if we were to do something like X plus the um, 300 and let's just say Y plus 20, right? Then you, you know, you'll see that that doesn't work. You know, that doesn't work. So in other words, you know, this is having an effect of where the player is and at X and Y it's working perfectly. So let's jump back into our render player thing. Um, and you can see that that's sort of how we're playing around with the offsets. Now we do have this set offset thing that people keep talking about. That's kind of useful because you know, it lets us set the offset of the player, but what's happening right now is that player is centered, right? It's centered, but it's off center. So what's happening is as we debug the game, as we move, this thing's moving along with the camera, which means that it's tracking the location of the player, which is perfect. So right now, if we go back to our game dot a Java class, um, then if we go down to our rendering thing, we can actually, you know, see that we're setting player X and player Y at a particular location. So if we hit up level dot render, you can see that the screen offset is being set, you know, according to player controls, because if we go back here, you can see the player dot X and player dot Y is being set up that way. But what we really want to do here is actually, I guess, offset their locations to be in the middle of the screen. So we can do that with, you know, 
basically a few simple math calculations. So first of all, I'm just gonna make two integers just to make this a bit easier. I'm gonna call the first one X scroll. So that'll that'll deal with the actual horizontal position of the player. Um, and we'll set we'll set X scroll equal to player.x minus screen.width divided by two. So what that's doing is basically putting it in the middle of the screen um, based on X, right? Um, and then we'll also do Y scroll as well which obviously will be exactly the same, except player.y minus screen.height divided by two, okay? So it's getting, it's getting the location of the player and then it's subtracting half of the width of the screen, which is putting it right into the middle of the screen, uh, x, y's, and then it's doing the same thing in, into, it's doing the same thing with y as well. So if we substitute these for x scroll and y scroll, our new variables that we've made, that of course use player.x and player.y, which is what we used before, you'll see that now, check this out. The player is the center of attention. So a few things I wanna just touch on. First of all, we haven't noticed, noticed that we haven't actually changed the location of this. Rather, we've changed the location of the map. The location of the map used to assume that the player was in the top left corner, right? When we moved the player here, we sort of moved the map and that's really cool. So you can see how that sort of works out um, to being now in the center um, with a few simple calculations. So that's really how powerful this little set offset thing that we've done is. Um, but yeah, right now the player is the size of one tile and uh, it's there's still, this is only one quarter room. So, um, so yeah, we'll figure out the, the rest of the three quarters in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Game Programming. Um, let me know what you think about the new microphone. Hopefully um, my voice is even more sexy with this thing. But um, until then, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Later.